What's happening guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to another video. So on today's video I'm going to talk about the creative process of going from basically idea conception to putting together a physical product. So let's get stuck into it. By my face. Hey, don't got time to waste. Yeah. I don't need permission, I'ma do it all today. Yeah. They just can't believe it, man. That's all they gonna say. See these places. Welcome back guys to another video. If you don't know who I am, my name's Ash. I'm a Gold Coast photographer here in Queensland, Australia. You can check out my pop tag here and I'm going to put uh, my Instagram profile here up on the screen so you can scroll through it. I also happen to run a small clothing company called Hidden Visions. Uh, pop tag is also here as well as some of our content over here. I posted this on social media the other day about if anyone was interested because I'm working on a new line, a new collection for Hidden, if they were interested in knowing about the creative process from like idea conception to final product, I guess you could say. So I'm just gonna walk you through the process of what we go through. By all means, I'm no expert. This is just a trial and error thing and just this experience that we've gone through and hopefully uh, by showcasing it to you guys, you'll get some value and maybe some tips and tricks or see some things that you can avoid or stuff that you shouldn't do or should do and find some value in that. So let's run through how we go from doing something like this to coming up with something like this. So at the current moment, we are probably halfway through the run of the More Love Collection Part 2. If you want to shop it, uh, link is in the description. Make sure you check it out. We are currently putting together products and ideas and designs together for collection two, which hopefully will be out for summer. At the moment, a couple of things are going, getting thrown around. Obviously we're doing t-shirts and a whole bunch of other stuff. Where I like to start is the creative process. Now the creative process basically doesn't ever stop for me. It's constant because creativity, inspiration, any of that sort of stuff can strike at any one moment. So more often than not, I try to pull all the, those ideas when I want to sit down and really go through it thoroughly. But if I'm scrolling through social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or checking up on news articles on say like websites like Hypebeast or GQ or High Snobiety or wherever you get your fashion information from, it might be even YouTube or you see something on like a video that might be old that you find really interesting. I tend to screenshot those things. Um, I'm also a big believer in always carrying a notebook around um, just to write down ideas. I'm not sure if any of you are like that, but for me, I'm super visual. So having things to look at, whatever sort of tingles my senses in terms of visually, I like to have that in front of me. When I like to have those things in front of me, I tend to, when I sit down and go, okay, cool, it's time to really work on that next collection. I'll pull all those ideas and I'm a big advocate for things like a mood board. So I usually start with obviously collection two. It's up there on the wall. You can't really see it, but collection two, try and come up with some names and some themes. So that's uh, a bit of a direction and a vision of where we want to end up in terms of what we want to produce, followed by maybe going through colors that I want to use in that collection. So what type of color t-shirts, what color prints, all those sort of little things that help me come and define what type of designs we want to put out there for you guys as a consumer. Then I also like to add things like what type of products might be cool, what's trending, what's things that you try and forecast a little bit. I'm no sort of Nostradamus when it comes to this sort of stuff and predicting what's cool or what's not. I'm hoping that like when we do something that it'll hopefully kick off and you guys will like it. More importantly, I tend to try and stick to designs that are true to myself that I really like. So I pull a lot of ideas and inspiration from things such as vintage uh, band merchandise such as this, uh, vintage wrestling tees, big 90s fan. I grew up listening to grunge music and watching the NBA in the 90s. I also try and keep a tab on like current trends such as like, you know, obviously the sneaker game and Off-White and Heron Preston and Fear of God and keep a tab on all those things. And so all of those ideas help in terms of like trying to create something that I'm really, really happy with or mold a direction that we want to head in. 
After I've pulled all these ideas together and sat down with them and figured out like, cool, there's some designs that I want to do. I'll sit down with Photoshop on this bad boy and spend a few hours in the lab trying to like work on designs that I can put together. Now, if I'm happy with that design, I'll generally keep it and work on it and I'll keep that aside. So I start to put all those designs together. You'll see them up on the wall where you can see a little bit of them. Uh, some designs that we've worked on that could go pro to production, may not go to production, but I'd rather have them and maybe I see them or someone might come around and see them and you go, oh, that's really cool. That should be something you do. We might even preview them on the stories and things like that. If for instance, there is a design that I'm not particularly happy with or I think something could be better with it, I might outsource it. So I try and pull all those ideas again together, try and paint as good a picture and outsource to say, another graphic designer or an artist. That could be anybody. In your case, you just find someone that you're happy with. You can find them on places like Fiverr. I tend to follow a lot of graphic designers and artists on Instagram, so sometimes I reach out to them. I'm lucky to be sort of amongst the community of creatives where I can sort of reach out to a lot of friends that do design work and get them to help me. Uh, put together some stuff for my brand. Now, the cool thing with that is sometimes it's really good to have that third person's uh, perspective in terms of like seeing what you're trying to do and then making it better. Uh, because sometimes you get so like closed in with what you think you're trying to uh, create that you lose sight of where it could go and where it could be. So once you've got these designs perfected in terms of like, maybe it's just a logo, maybe it's the way your font looks, maybe it is a big graphic design. Uh, the next big thing in the process is basically producing that product. So you've spent the time working on your theme, your vibe, uh, the design you want to put out there and you go, cool, this is going to look killer on what product, you know? So let's take, for example, a t-shirt. So we've got some designs that we think will look really cool on a t-shirt. We've got a certain idea. So for us in this next collection, I'm hoping to do like vintage wash shirts uh, with sort of some throwback uh, designs with a big back print and maybe a couple of simple prints on the front or a couple of big front prints. I haven't really decided yet, but I'm also working on like producing just a blank t-shirt with some simple tagging ideas. So in this process, it's also probably good to probably hop back to maybe just like your mood board and your idea for your collection is to write down what type of products you really want to produce for that collection. So at the moment we're doing t-shirts and we're looking at creating shorts and we're trying to think a little bit long term into maybe we get something ready for a part two of that release as well, whether it's like a light cargo or a denim or a jacket or something like that. The thing with like producing the product is a little bit more difficult. So once you're happy with your design, uh, the next step in the process or the simplest way to get that design onto a t-shirt would be to call a local screen printer. So I would jump onto Google and find local screen printers in your area. That's what I started with many, many years ago when we started printing on t-shirts such as AS Color or Gildan. So there's a couple of different ways to go about it. You can have your design, you can put it on a t-shirt, and you just have to find a t-shirt that you're really happy with. Now, a lot of that comes down to how much you're willing to pay, what type of product you wanna do, and uh, whether or not it's something you can get here in the country or your printer can get. Now, for us, we actually outsource all of our product overseas uh, because what we wanna do is we wanna actually craft the t-shirt the itself on top of screen print it. So it's actually easier for us to outsource overseas to do a product like that than it is to do it here locally. Going back to a screen printed situation, you might take your design and once it's ready, you'll have to think about how many colors it is, how big that design is going to be. So make sure you measure everything. So I always measure every part of the design, how wide it is, how long it's going to be, what parts of the t-shirt are. So a hot tip for this that I think is really good is you can go buy a blank t-shirt, doesn't matter what t-shirt obviously that's close to what you're trying to do so if you're using as color i would go get the as color shirt that you have and you can actually print out your designs cut them out on a piece of paper and i tend to stick them to a shirt and just to see what they look like which just gives you a bit of an idea of what the product's going to finally look like and it's not perfect but it gives you a good gauge of where you're at 
before going to print and spending all your money and getting something you're not really happy with. Trust me, I've done that before and it sucks. I do this especially dealing with our overseas guys. Once they've produced something that I'm super happy with, um, I, I make sure I measure twice, send them over the measurements, especially for us with a t-shirt, we are doing everything. That's the design of the t-shirt. So sleeve lengths, width of the t-shirt, how big the chest is, how long the shirt actually is, what type of prints, whether it's embroidery, what type of tagging. So all of that is involved in our cost of our product. When you are thinking about doing a print, so say you just wanted a one color print of your logo and you want to slap it on the front of your t-shirt. So that's probably going to be the cheapest way you could do something is to source an AS color t-shirt or a Gildan t-shirt or a Comfort Colors or an American Apparel t-shirt. Your screen printer is going to charge you for the screen, it's going to charge you for the colors, it's going to charge you for his time and the product. Boom. That is your product. It's done once all that's sorted. So in Hidden's process, basically, we go back and forth with our manufacturer. Um, we order a sample. Hopefully it gets as close as possible to what you want, or at least is what you want. Sometimes it isn't. You have to go back and forth a few times. It's by far the most expensive part of the process. But once it's right, you make sure you measure everything twice, get all your measurements down, send everything off again. Boom. If you're happy with it, we pay the deposit, move on then shirts and everything get shipped over here and then boom, we have a product. Now, the process itself is pretty simple. Come up with an idea, design it, find a t-shirt you like, print it on a t-shirt. It's just a matter of researching all those little things and hopefully finding a screen printer or the process that suits you best. Whether that's outsourcing to overseas, whether that's just simply screen printing on a local t-shirt, and trust me, I go back and forth all the time because I grew up on skate brands such as like Diamond Supply, um, Supreme, Palace, Benny Gold, The Hundreds, and they just screen print on the t-shirts and I really, really do appreciate that. But for me, I wanna provide something that is start to finish we've had to do with. So, in conclusion, to wrap things up, it's a pretty simple process. It can be more in depth if you want to. It obviously gets harder when you start moving overseas and you're talking to people who don't speak your language as their first language. But hopefully you found this video helpful. You found some tips or tricks that you might uh, incorporate in your business. Or if you think I missed out on anything, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, leave that in the comments below. Um, I'm by far no sort of expert. This is just the process of what we've done. And hopefully we're still learning along the way. Hopefully you guys learned something. But if you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to leave us a thumbs up. Uh, hit the links in the bio to check out us, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and all those good things. And, uh, and don't forget, the More Love Collection Part 2 is available now. You can shop the link in the bio, or in the description, I should say. But anyway, that's me signing off, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Can't believe it, man, that's all they gonna say See these places